Picture this. Ronnie Coleman, eight-time Mr. Olympia, steps under a barbell loaded with 800 pounds, shouts, yeah, buddy, lightweight, baby, and powers through a squat. In another gym, young phenom Sam Sulek grinds out a high rep set of curls, veins popping as he chases an outrageous pump. Two beasts, two eras, two completely different training styles. One is all about raw strength, the other about sheer muscle size. Hypertrophy versus strength training. What's the real difference and which approach is better for you? Let's dive into this showdown. Before I ever picked up a weight, I assumed getting stronger automatically meant getting bigger. But in reality, strength training and hypertrophy training are not the same. The exercises may look similar, but the programming, reps, sets, rest, and intent is completely different. Strength training is focused on maximizing how much weight you can lift, while hypertrophy training is about increasing the size of your muscles. In other words, one is about force output, the other is about aesthetics. Strength routines typically use heavy loads for low reps, around 1 to 5 reps per set at 80 to 100% of your 1 rep max. This builds maximum tension and recruits your nervous system to fire more efficiently. Hypertrophy training, on the other hand, uses moderate weights for moderate reps, around 6 to 12 reps per set at 65 to 80% of your 1 rep max, to increase time under tension and stimulate muscle fiber growth. Because lifting near your max is so taxing, strength programs usually include lower volume and fewer total sets, while hypertrophy programs involve more volume to drive muscle damage and growth. Rest periods also differ. Strength-focused lifters rest 2-5 to five minutes between sets to fully recover for the next heavy effort, while hypertrophy training uses shorter rests, 30-90 to 90 seconds, to keep fatigue high and stress the muscles more. These approaches lead to different adaptations. Strength training primarily creates neurological gains, improving muscle fiber recruitment and coordination. That's why you can get significantly stronger without looking much bigger. Hypertrophy training, however, leads to structural changes. Your muscle fibers actually grow in size. Both styles target your fast twitch type 2 muscle fibers, the ones most responsible for size and power. But hypertrophy training also engages slow twitch fibers and maximizes total growth. Ultimately, the best results come when you train with purpose. Whether your goal is to lift heavier, look bigger, or both, knowing how to tailor your approach makes all the difference. What's really going on inside your body when you train for strength versus hypertrophy? It all comes down to the type of adaptation, neural versus muscular. Strength training is largely a neurological skill. Lifting heavy weights trains your nervous system to recruit more muscle fibers more efficiently. Your brain learns to fire more motor units faster and more precisely. That's why beginners often get stronger quickly. Their nervous system adapts before their muscles visibly grow. Research backs this up. Low rep, high intensity training significantly boosts these neural adaptations. Hypertrophy training, on the other hand, focuses on muscle damage and fatigue. Moderate rep ranges with controlled form create micro tears and metabolic stress, forcing the muscle to rebuild and grow larger. Over time, this increases the cross-sectional area of the muscle fibers, which is the very definition of hypertrophy. There's also a nuance in the type of muscle growth. Myofibrillar hypertrophy, growth of contractile proteins, adding strength and density, versus sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, increased muscle fluid, glycogen, and endurance capacity. Strength style training favors myofibrillar gains, while high volume pump training leans a bit more towards sarcoplasmic growth. In practice, both happen together typically around an 80-20 split, and the balance can shift slightly based on your training style. Muscle fiber types also play a role. Heavy, low rep lifting primarily targets fast twitch type 2 fibers, the big, powerful ones. Hypertrophy training, especially when pushing close to failure, eventually recruits both type 1 slow twitch and type 2 fibers. But since type 2 fibers have more growth potential, they're still the main drivers of visible size gains. Now, do you have to stay in the classic 6 to 12 rep range to grow muscle? Surprisingly, no. Studies show you can build muscle across a wide range of reps, from 5 to 20 or more, as long as you're training close to failure. That said, 6 to 12 reps is a sweet spot for most people, heavy enough to be effective, light enough to maintain good form, and not so light that you need 50 reps to feel anything. Strength training builds neurological efficiency and max power. Hypertrophy training builds muscle through fatigue and tension. But there's plenty of overlap, and smart lifters use both. If your sets are challenging, your form is solid, and your intensity is real, 
you will grow. When I first walked into the gym, my goal was simple, get bigger. I didn't care how much I could lift, I just wanted muscular arms and a barrel chest. So I jumped into a classic bodybuilding routine I found online. Lots of exercises, three sets of 10, chasing the burn every workout. And for a while, it worked. My shoulders broadened, my t-shirts fit tighter, and I loved the mirror gains. But there was a problem. Despite looking more muscular, I wasn't actually strong. I still struggled to bench 135 pounds, even after months of training. I was frustrated. I had some size, but very little real strength. That's when a powerlifter friend of mine convinced me to try a strength-focused program. Suddenly, I was doing low rep sets, longer rest periods, and focusing on weekly progression. My squat and deadlift numbers skyrocketed, and I felt a new kind of accomplishment, not just in the mirror, but in the weight room. Interestingly, during that strength phase, I didn't gain much size. My muscles felt denser, but I didn't look much better. That's when it clicked. I needed to combine both worlds. I started cycling between strength and hypertrophy phases. A few months focused on low rep, heavy lifts to build raw power, followed by higher rep, high volume training to spark growth. The results were game changing. After getting stronger, I could use heavier weights during my hypertrophy phases, turning sets of 8 to 12 into serious growth tools. For example, after a winter of strength training, I returned to a bodybuilding routine and suddenly benched 185 pounds for 10 reps instead of 155. My chest exploded with new development. Over time, this approach transformed both my physique and my strength far more than either style alone ever could. And I've seen the same results with clients. One athlete focused purely on strength and watched his deadlift climb from 315 to 405 in a few months with modest muscle gain. Another client trained purely for aesthetics, added 10 pounds of lean mass over the summer, and got strong all along the way, even without chasing one rep maxes. That's the key insight. While you should train for your main goal, there's always carryover. Strength training makes you more capable in your hypertrophy work. Hypertrophy training adds muscle, which boosts your strength potential. When you stop thinking of them as separate camps and start using them both strategically, that's when the real progress begins. To really highlight the difference between training for strength and training for size, let's look at two iconic lifters from different eras, Ronnie Coleman and Sam Solik. Ronnie Coleman, an eight-time Mr. Olympia, is legendary for combining insane strength with unmatched muscularity. His training in the late 90s and early 2000s was pure intensity, squatting 800 pounds for reps, leg pressing over 2,000 pounds, all while shouting, Lightweight baby! Ronnie trained like a powerlifter with a bodybuilder's volume. He'd hit low rep, heavy sets, then follow up with moderate reps and tons of volume to completely destroy the muscle. The result? One of the biggest and strongest physiques ever seen. Ronnie didn't just look powerful, he was powerful. As he famously said, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift heavy weight. Now, fast forward to today, and you've got Sam Sulek, a young bodybuilding phenom known for his sheer size and focus on hypertrophy. Watch Sam train and you'll see endless volume, high reps, pump focus sets, five variation of curls and a single session. He's not chasing PRs or one rep maxes. His entire focus is on building maximum muscle and crafting an aesthetic, freakishly full physique. Sam trains like a pure bodybuilder from start to finish. Long sessions, insane volume, and tons of food to fuel it. Comparing the two shows two different paths to impressive physiques. Ronnie trained for both strength and size and built elite levels of both. Sam trains strictly for size and is growing rapidly by pushing hypertrophy to its limit. If you asked who had the better method, it depends on your goal. Ronnie would outlift almost anyone, while Sam might end up with the more extreme aesthetic look through his high volume only approach. Both approaches work. It all depends on your desired outcome. But if you want the best of both worlds, Ronnie's hybrid style of heavy lifting and high volume might just be the gold standard. Training priorities shift depending on whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifter. And your approach to strength versus hypertrophy should evolve accordingly. For beginners, the great news is that everything works. You'll gain both muscle and strength quickly thanks to newbie gains. Your nervous system is adapting, and your muscles are highly responsive. A simple routine, like compound lifts for three sets of five, can build a solid base of strength and size in the first six to 12 months. You might go from squatting an empty bar to 200 pounds in half a year, and your legs will grow noticeably along the way. At this stage, the focus should be on learning good form, staying consistent, and enjoying the fast progress. There's no need for strict specialization. 
Mixing rep ranges and training both qualities works just fine. Intermediate lifters typically one to three years in start to plateau. Progress slows and this is when being more strategic becomes necessary. You'll benefit from training blocks that focus either on hypertrophy or strength, depending on your goals. For example, if muscle growth stalls, increase your volume and reps 8 to 15 range to push hypertrophy. If your strength stalls, shift into a low rep phase with heavier weights and longer rest using programs like 5x5. Many intermediates thrive using block periodization, alternating between strength and hypertrophy phases every few weeks or months. Hybrid routines, like power building, also work well here where you train heavy on compound lifts and then hit higher rep accessory work. The key is to start tailoring your training to break plateaus and keep progressing in the areas that matter most to you. Advanced lifters, with years of training under their belts, face the slowest progress and the highest need for structure. Specialization becomes necessary. Powerlifters might spend months in hypertrophy-focused off-seasons before switching to a strength-focused peak, while bodybuilders spend most of the year training for size and occasionally work on strength to support long-term growth. At this level, you can't maximize everything at once, so training phases must have clear priorities. That said, even specialists maintain some balance, powerlifters need muscle mass to support strength, and bodybuilders need enough strength to keep pushing heavier loads for growth. Many advanced athletes use a mixed or conjugate method, one heavy, low rep day per week, and another focused on high rep volume. Intelligent periodization is essential at this stage. Cycling between strength and hypertrophy over the course of the year isn't just useful, it's how most elite lifters continue to make gains, even after years of training. After all this, you might still be wondering, which training style is better, strength or hypertrophy? The honest answer is, neither is universally better. It all depends on your goal. It's like asking whether a hammer is better than a screwdriver. Each is designed for a specific purpose. If your main goal is to lift the most weight possible, whether for powerlifting, athletics, or raw strength, then strength training is the right tool. That means low reps, heavy weights, longer rest, and programming that prioritizes the nervous system. You're training your body to fire harder, not just look bigger. On the flip side, if your goal is to build size, improve your physique, and get that classic muscular look, hypertrophy training is the better fit. You'll grow faster with moderate weights, higher reps, more volume, and targeted muscle work. If your priority is aesthetics, size, shape, and muscle definition, this is your lane. But here's the key. You don't have to pick just one forever. Strength and hypertrophy are overlapping circles. A bodybuilder who never lifts heavy may miss out on growth potential. A powerlifter who never trains for volume may stall out because they're not building the muscle needed to push more weight. For most people, especially recreational lifters, the best results come from a blended approach, often called power building. Start your workouts with heavy compound lifts to build strength, then follow up with higher rep accessory work to target growth. You get stronger and more muscular at the same time without neglecting either goal. Over time, you can cycle between phases, spend a few months focused on strength, then switch to a hypertrophy block. This keeps your body adapting and your progress steady. Bottom line, there's no one-size-fits-all winner between strength and hypertrophy training. Use strength training to build power, use hypertrophy training to build size. And if you're smart, you'll mix them both, just like many elite lifters do. In my experience and in the experience of champions like Ronnie Coleman, the magic happens when you combine both methods in the right balance. The best program is the one that moves you closer to your goals whether that's chasing a new PR or filling out your sleeves with muscle. If you want to achieve a Greek god physique naturally, make sure you watch this video series where I rank the best and worst exercises for muscle building.